When you need auto parts, O'ReillyAuto.com is just a click away. Order online and pick up at your local store. Visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Son of Porthos. With unsteady feet, Joel has climbed the stairs to his room over the inn of the cooked crayfish in the depths of the black forest. Standing in the hospitable circle of light from the fire, watching the closed bedroom door, his evil face alight with grim satisfaction, is mine host of the inn, the German Caspar Brown. And watching the German is the girl from Paris, Therese. Caspar Brown stands silent a moment, grinning. Then he turns to the white-faced girl. Drunk, tired, and ready to sleep. Ah, my sweet Therese, the cat is in the bag now. Yes. He went down before the doctored wine like corn before the side. Oh, it was sweet to see. For such a big man, he has a poor head for drinking. Or oh, did you give him a double dose, my friend, eh? No. Mm, in any case, we settled him. Are you going up to him right away? No. Didn't you hear he carries dispatches. Much as I'd like to think his purse is more valuable than an ordinary soldier, he carries dispatches from Harris for that old fool creaky at Freyworth. <laughs> He's a fine cat for us. Where are you going? To get your friend Walter. He and his friends will pay well for these dispatches, I've no doubt of that. Now, let me see. That. Coat. Mm, gun. Well, I'll not be long away. Then he is not to die. Ah, oh, don't worry over that detail, there is. He will die when we are ready to kill him. He did not have death in his face. Ah, nor have I the disposition to be frightened by you and your witchcraft. Death in his face. A knife in his back. And who cared about his face then? Well, I must be off. No, I doubt if our friend will move for some time yet. You know where I am. I go to the mill to meet Walter. If the soldier moves, blow the hunting horn, and we'll come to your assistance without delay. You understand? Perfectly. Goodbye, then. I'll not be long. No. No, he will not be long. When you can leave you here. Come at all here. Yet there was not death in his face. But I must be quick. Monsieur! Monsieur! Monsieur, it is safe now. Yes? He has gone. It is safe at the moment. Come down quickly. It was drugged, monsieur. Yes, I guessed as much. And why did you gesture to me behind his back? I, I took the hint and acted like one drunk, but upon my sword, I, I do not understand it. You acted almost too well, monsieur. I never saw a man get so drunk so fast in all my life. He was served. He was very sure of himself. Therefore, careless. What is this all about? Tell me. I will tell you enough to satisfy you if I can. We have not time for much. For he has gone to the mill and will not be long. Well? Mine host is not a good man, monsieur. It is his practice to drug the wine of stray travelers, particularly soldiers, and to kill them for what valuables they may carry. Why did you not tell me this at once? I would have run him through with my sword and saved a deal of trouble. I was afraid, monsieur. He is a wily soldier here, Brown. 
I didn't want you killed. That was kind of you at any rate. Your own chatter saved your life, monsieur. But when you mentioned you'd carried the chapter, Herr Brown knew you were more valuable than that. He has friends, enemies of France. We'll pay well for military information. He has gone to consult one now. And where do you, a Parisian, come into this evil scheme? They suggested to me that, as I am French, I should decoy young officers and so deliver the general's plans to the enemy. Well, did you do this thing? The opportunity has not arisen until tonight. But surely, mademoiselle, love for your country would make you repulse such a suggestion at once. I do not know, monsieur. You do not know? Mademoiselle, honor, patriotism. My life has not been as yours, monsieur. Honor and patriotism have not played a very large part up to date. And this man, whom Brown has gone to meet, he is a tyrant, a demon. You mean he would force you to do these things? Well, you cannot understand. I cannot explain. But believe me, he is a sort of villain. Will not need the excuse of your dispatches to join in Caspar's plan to kill you in your bed. Let them but try. Oh, sure, I beg of you. Every minute you spend here is dangerous. This man is a devil and unscrupulous. He needs information to sell to Prince Charles of Lorraine. That is why he is here. What chance have you then? What is this wretch to you? Hello. He is my husband. You love him? Oh, perhaps once I did. Who knows? Now he is my torturer. The living reminder of a past I would forget. They just chained us together like two convicts in the galleys and... I cannot escape it. But you must just... Let him come. I tell you, take it back soon and don't stand no chance. Frankie Forest is full of deserters, whom a gold coin would convert to murderers. Let them all come. Monsieur, I understand that you are more than willing to deal single handed with the whole army. But Wilson is coming. He may fire the house. Who cares? Perhaps not, Monsieur Le Chevalier. But what of her? You mean? The woman whom you love, Monsieur. The woman who loves you. Aurore? Did you mean Aurore? And how did you know? I did not know her name. I can't tell you how I knew. But this I tell you most earnestly, monsieur. A man who loves and is beloved has no right to go rashly into danger. I had forgotten. If they were to kill you, what of her? You can tell when she may need your sort of one. Think of her, monsieur. Indeed, I shall. And think of me, too. If they discover I betrayed them, my life will no longer be safe. I do not want to be murdered before I have time for repentance. I will do what you wish. What do you want to do? You must go at once. I kept the harness on your horse and made ready to walk on them. On those, you must go as quickly as possible. There is not a moment to waste. You would have me run away, run before such comers. As... There is no other way. Oh, do not hesitate. I will show you how to meet them some other time. Very well. I'll come. Good. We go through the back door. It is near us. Follow me quietly. And without question. I am ready. Come then. You will have to bend, monsieur. It is not good for drives like you. And keep your hand upon your sword. You battle so. I am with you. Monsieur, we will not cross the courtyard. For they will return and they might see us in the night from the windows. But in the cafe, there's a path that leads through the trees beyond the arbor. And bring us to the stables without danger. Keep close behind me. I am following. Monsieur. What is it? Someone is coming. Is it? Yes. Oh, here we are. They're coming this way. And we'll be honest in a moment. Oh, we haven't protected this from the lock. Be quiet. They'll hear you. Our only chance lies in silence. Press back into the bushes here and be still. They will pass by us. But move quickly. Monsieur. Well, why do you sell it like upstairs and you need to return the path into the bridge back there? I thought. Take a moment. Now. Oh. I see no light, my lord. You can see for yourself. The place is as still as the grave. I saw a light distinctly. It went off as I watched it. Oh, my lord, that was probably this gentleman's wife. 
I expect he thought all was over for the night and went to bed. Is he to be trusted? He would not give an alarm. Therese? <laughs> My Therese. Oh, no, no. It's difficult to tell with a woman. Hmm. Lord, I can assure you he is as subservient to my will as the cane I will. My lord, if you are in doubt, I'll hurry on ahead and make sure for you. Hmm. That would perhaps ease my mind. Yes, indeed it would. Anyway, for the time, let us move on. It is cold here and windy. Uh, not so fast, monsieur. You must be very careful. Let us proceed with all caution. Remember, it was a busy night ahead. Walton, come on. You think I should go ahead and see that all is well at the end? Yes, you know I have plenty of They have gone. Yes. Yes, they have gone, monsieur. We have gone and so are we. For if Brown goes to the inn, we are lost. We are lost beyond hope, monsieur. Lost beyond hope. And you will tell us both this night. Adapted for radio by Margaret Dunn from the novel by Alexander Dumas. A George Edwards production. Mm-hmm.